Madeline during a different period of her life, when her career was just beginning to take off, was an actress who starred with Marilyn in an unforgettable film, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. This woman is a Hollywood legend herself. She has been on Broadway and in dozens of films. Would you please welcome Jane Russell? I'm so pleased. She came in in white slacks and says, I don't know if I'm going to put on this skirt or not. And I said, well, I do star. whatever the boss wants. Hey, oh, come on. <laughs> Jane was already a, a show business veteran when you and Marilyn worked together in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. But it was one of her first big pictures, I think. Uh, what was it like to work with her? Was this lady on time? Was she punctual? Was she a pro? I know you are, but what was she like? Well, I'd been working for a long time, and um, Marilyn didn't even have a dressing room on the 20th Century Fox lot. She'd already made Niagara, but oh, uh, yeah. uh, she didn't have her own dressing room, which is insane. And um, she got her first dressing room when we did Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And she was uh, very sensitive, super sensitive. Um, so she got her feelings hurt, you know, a lot. The guys around the studio are not exactly uh, tactful. <laughs> no, not tactful. And uh, she would. She started being a little bit late. And uh, Howard Hawks was the director, and Jack Cole was doing the dancing. And uh, he he really had a <laughs> a problem with the two of us. I want to I want to show people a clip that Jane may not have seen in a little while anyhow from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes because it mentions these people. We just happen to have it available. Take a look. We're just two little girls from Little Rock. We lived on the wrong side of the track. But Little Rock or Square Rock, these gals must have their They cut that number, but they left it in the titles. <laughs> only in Hollywood and yeah. only those days. When I first met Marilyn, we were rehearsing the dancing, and uh, neither one of us were dancers. And Jack Cole would be very tough on his own dancers, but he was the patience of Job with us. He was so dear and so sweet, and he would do it over and over until we were doing it, you know, without even thinking, because <laughs> that was the only way we could do it. You would think with high-powered women like that, I noticed you got top billing. Well, uh, I, I'd been around a long time. I'm <laughs> very old broad. <laughs> Did, uh, what was uh, your nickname for Marilyn? I called her Blondel. Blondel? Blondel. <laughs> you know, can, can I, there's something that I say in, in the book that's something that Marilyn said about you, which I'm sure you know, but which I really liked, which Marilyn at one point said, well, gee, she, that she really, how nice Jane had been to her, and she said, you know, gee, Jane tried to convert me to religion, and I tried to convert her to Freud. <laughs> But you know, the strange thing is that one of the things I feel that Marilyn was looking for all her life mm -hmm. and that would have helped her was not religious, but some kind of spiritual center, well, something to I hold on to. I think you have to have that in life. And she never I certainly it. wasn't trying to introduce her to religion because I don't like religion. Or spirit. But it was the Lord. Yes, it was the him. Lord. And we had a, a group called the Hollywood Christian Group, and Connie Haynes and uh, Rhonda Fleming, Donald O'Connor, right. a whole gang of us would meet in a home, and we ha asked different speakers. So after Marilyn and I were working for a while, I thought, well, maybe she would be interested. 
So one night she followed me out mm -hmm. to Connie's house and uh, we had the to-do. And uh, it was a, a very good speaker. And after we just sat around half the time on the floor because there were never enough seats in anybody's house for this gang. And we did it because everybody that had come to Hollywood might feel peculiar going to church. They'd get stared at and that kind of thing. Actually, that and makes a lot of sense. So yeah. it is a Christian yeah. meeting. It was a Christian meeting, very informal. And sense. the next day she said, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> OK. You know, so I said, OK, But you know what? Fine. Had she had some kind of stability, whether it was an accepting religion or it was she Freud was, or anything else she that she wanted at to Christian science when she was younger, her favorite aunt. Aunt Anna had been a Christian scientist in Maryland uh, up even towards the end of her life before she went uh, out uh, let's say to do something that where she was really nervous she would often turn to someone and say hold a good thought for me yeah which is knowing that's like a little prayer and towards the end of her life she started doing that again asking people to hold a good thought for me and sometimes I think you know you can say that her life was tragic and that she's dead but you know what millions of people are still holding a good thought for her yeah. And that's a lot more than can be said that for a lot of people who are still here in the body. That's pretty good.